Welcome to your new team. Renault are a championship winning outfit and they've been methodically working to get back to those winning ways. Raw talent isn't enough here. This is a team that values someone who can dedicate themselves completely to achieving their goals. Oh, don't you worry, Emma. I am totally 100% dedicated. Hello, Carlos. Hello people of the internet, welcome back to the Armour Arcade and welcome to brand new surroundings for our F1 2018 career mode. I'm coming at you live from the Renault Sports Formula 1 team technical centre. I've just about learnt everyone's names here in the technical centre. I mean, I certainly know the name of him across from me. That's my new teammate, Carlos Sainz. Sorry, Nico Hulkenberg, and I've ended up replacing you eight races in. Sorry about that. I didn't really hint at a team change in the last few episodes, but really, this has kind of been on the cards since probably Monaco. You know, the episode where our teammate took us out for the second time in as many races. Yeah, that one. And I knew that after the next round of negotiations, after Paul Ricard, there would be a chance to negotiate with other teams there. Every time you get a contract renewal around that time, you can also negotiate with other teams. And I had kind of two options on the table because I felt like I'd kind of, I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it at Toro Rosso anymore. I was trying so hard to get that car punching above its weight. And for the most part, we were. But there was all the bollocks with our teammate, the absolute blithering idiot that was. It was just the car was kind of frustrating. It always felt like it was being pegged back in some way. I don't know, I just fancied something fresh, something new, and I fancied a team that could potentially not just challenge the top of the midfield, but maybe even go on to crack the big three of Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull. Call me foolish, call me ambitious, call me stupid, call me all of those things. You probably already have, but that's exactly what I wanted. So I had two options on the table, and they were Sauber, which may have seemed like a bit of a sideways move, but I have it on good authority. And I think TM at Marduk has proved this, actually, that the Sauber, thanks to its Ferrari power unit, is actually quite good in terms of power right off the bat. It just needs aero work, and then it becomes potentially a, a, a race-winning contender. And the other option is Renault, who I have a little bit of a sentimental attachment to, because my favourite team in F1 history were Lotus F1 team, who were around from 2012 through to 2015, and then they evolved into these guys, they evolved into Renault Sport, having, I think, previously been Renault as well. They've all been at the same team at the Endstone facility in the UK. So I had a bit of a nostalgic uh, attachment to this team. And as you can see on the right, it's the fourth best car, pound for pound, in the field right now. Still some distance behind the big three of Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, but that's who we're gunning for going forward. You see there, it's a full four positions above our old car, the Toro Rosso Honda, and the chassis and the aero. Look how good they are. The chassis and the aero is amazing on this car. Unfortunately, it has the Renault powertrain or power unit, which, because I developed the Honda at Toro Rosso, is now the worst power unit in the field. So I kind of shot myself in the foot on that one before I got here. But we've had plenty. There's been work done on this car already. Whoever, well, Hulk, Nico Hulkenberg was driving this car before. You can see where he's focused his resources on the power unit. That's probably what we're going to be doing as well. Very minimal chassis work so far. The chassis is very good out of the box. And some decent aero work. I've already completed practice. And uh, all the mini games. for once, every single mini game was really easy. There's a sign already that I like this new car. No, no faffing around for ages trying to do the ERS sim or uh, tyre sim or fuel sim, whatever the ones used to be a pain in the ass. Even qualifying sim was ridiculously easy this time around. So here we go then. It's time for our first qualifying session with Team Bumblebee. Right, usual strat supply here. Let everyone else set their banker laps first and then wait for the track to clear. And then we go out there and hopefully set a lap that's good enough to get into Q2 and hopefully unlike our time at Toro Rosso we shouldn't be sweating on getting into Q2 by the skin of our teeth right first lap in the books we had a stinker up at T1 and we put it P2 right out the gate P2 holy cow I think we were only a tenth off of Vettel I am more than happy if that doesn't get us into Q2 then I'm a rhinoceros um guys you are seeing this, aren't you? We genuinely finished Q1 in P2. Right, first lap in Q2. What's this good for? 
It's good for P2 again. Just one tenth of a second behind Bottas. I don't think the pace we had in Q1 was any kind of fluke, guys. Oh my! <laughs> First lap into Q3, and we've gone fastest. Guys, this isn't a drill. We're up two tenths on Lewis Hamilton with three and a half minutes in the session to go. They're all going out for one more run. Are they going to beat it at the death? Are they going to beat it at the death? No! No! Damn you, Hamilton! We were denied pole on our Renault debut by 0.03. Oh, so close. Holy shit, we're splitting the Mercs in our first race with Renault. We've not even got to the race yet. And this move has more than paid off. So funny story. I was so happy with how qualifying went. I immediately leapt up from my chair and went to make my cup of tea for the race. Forgetting that Claire wanted to interview us after such a great qualifying session. And I ran back into the room just in time to see her go, well, thanks anyway, after I'd just given just completely blank looks for all of her answers. <laughs> Sorry, Claire. Hopefully I get a good result in the race. You can talk to me that I'll be more talkative there. <laughs> Hadn't had my cup of tea. That's what it was. Seriously, I did not expect that at all. I thought we'd be pretty decent. I thought the Renault might be able to compete with the top six. Do not expect to be that close to the front right off the bat. I should point out right now, for the interest of disclosure, I did put ABS back on before this race simply because, especially with all the changeable condition races that we've had in the rain and everything, and I'm still not an expert in ABS, so a lot of it, I just didn't have any confidence in the car with braking trying to use ABS, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to try and practice without it off, but for now... I'm going to put it back on in career mode. I never claim to be some pro top level, like limitless or however or anyone like that sort of elite level sim racer. Um, holy cow. You know what I said about changeable condition races? Look at the weather forecast. It's another bloody wet start to a bloody race. Because that makes five out of the first nine races to have involved rain in some way. Doesn't look like the rain will be very around for very long, and it'll be mostly dry for the rest of the race. So as long as we get our changeover strategy right, wets to slicks, which is what we very much didn't do in the last race, Jeff, and with any luck, we should be good. And if anything, the rain might favour us around here, because as I pointed out earlier, the strength of this Renault is in the chassis and the aero which I think are both coming into play a lot around this track, given that it's quite a short lap. And there's quite a lot of fast, medium to high speed corners, especially in sector two and three. We're lining up P2, easily our best qualifying session of the season. First race for Renault, with a potential race win, not far out of our grasp. We're lining up alongside hashtag blessed. Oh boy, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Yes, race fans, welcome to Spielberg in Austria, to the Red Bull Ring, previously known as the A1 Ring for 90s fans like me, and previously before that known as the Osterreich Ring. Also the place where famously Wong Pan GT and previously British touring car commentator John Watson lost a bet when he, and he had to shave his beard off when he won a race for Team Penske back when they were in Formula 1 in the 1970s. That's one thing I know about this track. I also know that not many people seem to like this track very much, and I can't really blame them. This is a weird sort of track. It's short and, and compact and fast, but it's kind of fiddly at the same time. There's a lot of medium speed corners that are actually quite tricky to do. And you've got to, you know, it's, it's a fiddly sort of one. It's a weird track, especially in rain that we are not set up for practice to drive in. But here is the starting grid. Lewis Hamilton, hashtag blessed, on the pole with 1 minute 6.1, just 0.03 seconds behind. It's Adam Johnson. There's an all British front row there. Bottas and Raikkonen row two. Vettel and Verstappen row three, I think it was. What happened to Ricardo? I didn't spot him there. Gasly and P10, both the uh, Racing Point Four seniors out there. Hartley in his first start for Toro Rosso, P16. Well done, mate. Well done. Uh, Daniel Ricardo's taken a, a group place penalty. That explains that. And Stoffel Van Dorn has decided to be kind and deny the Williams a back row lockout by also taking a penalty. <laughs> He's just being nice like that, I think. Oh, boy. Okay. There's a lot of new things in this shot. New brightly colored shirts on my crew members. New brightly colored car that I'm sitting in. And no cars in front of me. Just an ominous silver arrow over to my left. With a hashtag bless sitting in it. Let's check the race strategy. That doesn't really matter too much. Because it's a changeable condition race. 
the bigger issue is when we change onto tyres and what tyres we change onto. As we discovered in Paul Ricard, fuel load, we can definitely reduce that. Uh, da -da -da -da. So it's a 36 lap race. Let's bring it up to, let's do 37 laps of fuel. So we've got a lap extra of fuel roughly. Uh, in fact, maybe, maybe not quite as much. There we go. 36.8 laps worth of fuel. So we've got 0.8 of a lap fuel spare for when we need to run rich. And to be honest, given the uh, pathetic power unit in the back of this Renault, sorry, the actual Renault, <laughs> we probably will need some rich mix and maybe some high ERS modes to, to counter that. Are we ready? Uh, I'm not. But I do have my tea. The Renault engineers have allowed me to keep my uh, mid-race tradition of dr drinking tea. Mm. Oh, and it's piping hot. And as for the mid-race snack, you'll be pleased to know that tradition has come over from Toro Rosso as well. And for this race, it's a nice play of digestive biscuits. Not chocolate digestive, but if I do the unthinkable and win a Grand Prix for Renault, I'm going to be demanding all the chocolate digestives in my next contract negotiation. That will, basically, if I win a Grand Prix for Renault, I will enter the, nego the contract negotiation and be like, now look, whatever contract you offer me, Unlimited supply of chocolate digestive biscuits. Can we go out there and earn the race win that gets us an unlimited supply of chocolate digestive biscuits? And fame and fortune in the honor of being a Grand Prix winner? There's only one way to find out. Let's do this! Okay, here we go. Five lights. And away we go. The rear end a bit all over the place there. Oh my god, Bottas is trying to squeeze in. Can we stay out the inside? Hamilton's got a good start. Oh, and he cuts us off at C1. Oh my god, rear end a bit wobbly there. Hamilton is trying to get away. The Bottas got stuck up behind us. No wonder he was trying to get past in uh, in uh, quick succession in quite a hurry. It's up to turn two for the first time. Actually, this is turn three because um, that weird little... Th the fact we've just gone down a straight, apparently that's not classed as a straight. Meanwhile, I think all hell is breaking loose for P3. So, um, yo, Lewis, do you mind if I stick with you for a bit, mate? Just just stick with you, you know, the multi-time multi world champion. Oh, God. On the steer down at turn four, that is the most, that is my least favourite corner on the entire track. The rear end's a bit wobbly here. Oh my god, this is, okay, this is tricky. I've basically got no wet weather running at this track. This is another reason why I hate the game springing wet weather races on us. I basically spend all what time I have to practice these tracks. I don't have that much time in between, you know, work and YouTube and everything else. <laughs> I basically spend all my time practicing a track in the dry. I should probably start doing some wet weather runs because, you know, if the game's going to keep springing this on us. But, fairly uneventful opening lap, but I don't mind that at all because it means we haven't crashed, we haven't lost any positions, we haven't gained any either, but I mean we are up against hashtag blessed. We come across the line for the first lap, 1.2 seconds down on the aforementioned hashtag. Oh, meanwhile, Raikkonen has made up into P3. He's, uh, given that Vettel's still struggling, he's taking on the charge. Vettel's just like, you know what, mate, you go on up the track. See if he can take down that annoying wasp in P2. He's like, okay, I will try to do that. Because <laughs> my right-hand impression gets even worse by the episode. We have just apparently gone fastest in Sector 2, as I immediately understeer like an absolute bus. I mean, I've never actually driven a bus, so I don't know if they do actually understeer, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain they do. They, they don't exactly look like very kind of oversteery vehicles. I don't know. I, I might have to ring up uh, TFL and be like, can I, can I try and power slide a route master? Jeff, can you give me a weather report, please? And try and be somewhat accurate with it as well. We're looking at another five, maybe ten minutes of this rain. We're not certain which is the best tyre right now. Dries or inters. Okay, so that's interesting. We're on lap three and we're already at the point where Jeff's not certain whether it's about time to cross over to dry tyres. That's normally around the time that they reactivate DRS, which is your big giveaway, that yes, it is time to get into the pits right now and bang some slicks on it, you blithering idiot. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Oh, here we go. Jeff's got a strategy change for us on the deck. It was to pit on lap four. Thanks for that, Jeff. Copy. Cheers for that. So he's pulled the same shit like he did in Monaco. He gave us a change of strategy and our teammates in the pits. Brilliant. Everyone's in the pits. Thank you so much, Jeff. And there's DRS enabled. There we go. Oh, man. Right, okay. New strategy is available on the MFD. Is it pit last lap, Jeff? Yeah. Confirmed. Okay, yeah, I get the hint. It's just, you know when you, you, know when you want to pitch a strategy that means pitting on this lap? Would you mind pitching it to me before we get past the pit entry? That's, that's kind of the point of that. If you want me to pit on lap four, 
give it to me on lap four. <laughs> so Hamilton's in for a stop. He might get held up by us, actually. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, so we are going on super soft by the look of it. But luckily this time, Jeff made the choice for us. Oh my God. Oh my. We've just beaten Hamilton out the pits. Holy cow. We've just beaten Hamilton out the pits. Which means we're in the lead of the race. <laughs> oh my. Not to sound like Michael Cole or anything, but oh my. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's, there's no time to suck ourselves off about that fact. Even if we wanted to, which I don't. I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, there's a Gibby Riker and write up my trumpet. This is very concerning. Concerned reacts only. Hang on, wasn't he the guy that finished second to Max Verstappen in his first Grand Prix win? You know, the win that Max Verstappen got in his first race for a new team. Powered by Renault engines. You see where the similarities go, and I'm not saying I'm the next Max Verstappen, but I'm saying I'm actually better. Um, <laughs> although, although I need to actually get to the win Grand Prix part, and that's still a long way to go. Given that we've got the best part of 30 laps to go, and I've got a Ferrari right up my trumpet. Let's go to overtake ERS. Can we keep the Ferrari behind us? No, that Ferrari PU is just so OP. Can we dive bomb it back, though? Can we send it? No, he's just turned in on us like an absolute pleb. Thanks for that. Right, let's try that again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's maybe gone a bit wide there. It's OK. <laughs> we just rejoined. No runoff out there. That's fine. Why do I keep going for teams that have crap power units? Maybe that's my, maybe that's my like poor decisions in F1 sort of thing. It's like Damon Hill leaving a championship winning team and joining Arrows. It's like, yeah, these are the best team to defend my championship. Oh no. We are still only in P2 and we're still sticking with him, especially in these sectors. I told you the Renault would be good through here and we are so good in sector three. We are so good in sector three. This is unreal. We're right up behind Raikkonen down the main straight. His teammate Vettel's just taken P3. Do we send it up to turn one? No. Turn one is not all. Oh. And he just breaks it just so badly, he broke our front wing. Okay, let's try this again. And this time. Oh, he's parking the bus so much into T1. Just can't get by. I wonder if that was strategic from Raikkonen or whether he's just rubbish through the first turn. He's also not getting away from us. Can we send it into T2? Send it! Oh, gone! Get it! Oh, he hangs on! Go on! Come on! Oh, so close! We sent it on Raikkonen, and ultimately he was able to return its sender with some mild delivery costs. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Now's not the time to be making jokes, AJ. What do you want him out? Oh, go on, we got a run on Raikkonen. Oh my god, we got such a run on Raikkonen. What do we do here? We're gonna go to the outside, try and do a switch back here. Because we know he's kind of slow on the exit. Oh, go on! Oh, go on, he was so slow on the exit. Come on! Come on! Come on! We got DRS! Come on! Yes! 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 No! No, he's still there! Come on! Right, time to send it again! Send it again! Come on! Yes! 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 yes. We sent it! We've immediately run out of DRS, though! Oh my god, holy cow! Alright, we're back in the lead. I am just keeping one eye on the gap to third. And it is going down. Am I going to be dealing with both the Ferraris shortly? I think I am. Oh no! <laughs> I can barely cope with one of them, who's now got DRS. I need to get a good turn one. Come on, good turn one. Come on. Oh, he's got a good turn one as well. I feel like this is gonna be a pattern. I'll tell you what though, if he keeps trying to pass me on the straights, I won't lose that much time. Can I keep my position? No. Nope. Okay, he's gone late on the brakes. He gets the lead back, but I'd rather lose the lead that way. Then, like, go side by side through a bunch of corners and cost myself a load more time. Because now the gap to third's down to 6.2 seconds. Vettel, Vettel has had an invite to the party. He wants to join his teammate. His team have told him, oh, Kimi Raikkonen's having a battle with some player in a Renault up front. And Seb's like, excuse me? What is this? Get me up there right now. I'm joining. Wait for me. I've got the run down the straight again. Oh, oh, go on, go on, get on. He left out the throttle, come on! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Raikkonen is not good through T1. He just isn't. Oh, let's get some rich fuel working, come on. We've got plenty of fuel in reserve. Is he gonna, is he gonna send it into T2? I mean, three, I mean, whatever number that is. He tried, but he cannot. One does not simply try and outsend the, the postman. Apparently that's my nickname now, the postman. 
Adam the Postman Johnson. Yeah, I can just imagine Bruce Buffer announcing that in a UFC octagon. But we have just gapped Riken in a little bit. Still gonna get DRS. What I'm more concerned about is everyone else chasing us down. Oh no, we're gonna have an almighty party going on very shortly. And I think my back, my rear wing is going to be the host. Oh god, here comes Raikkonen again. Here comes Raikkonen. We're not gonna try and defend this time. We'll just tuck him behind. Do we try and send it? Send it up to the hairpin? No, that's okay. He is good at this corner. They're all now 4.9 seconds back. I am, I am slightly nervous right now. I'm also well aware that I didn't have not, neither a sip of tea nor any of my emergency mid-race biscuits on my first pit stop. Could have done with both. I'm struggling to come up with many jokes this episode, but this is not really a jokey episode. I'm having to try and pay attention to stuff. Although, do I risk taking a sip of tea on the run to turn three? Maybe not a bad idea as I missed my shifter gear eight and then nearly missed the braking point. That's another downside about this track. No wonder people don't like this track. You can't sip tea on the straights. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the super softs. Okay, so we're going on to another set of super softs. <gasps> and Riken is so slow through turn one again. We've got him. Yes! We've got him! We're in the lead again! <laughs> Do I risk another sip of tea in celebration? Mm. 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 Oh god. I think he actually gave us some Ponterino there. He's like, how dare you disrespect me by drinking tea as you pass me. Fuck you. <laughs> My Riken impression is just getting worse and worse by by the minute, I think. I should just leave it to James Hinchcliffe to impersonate Kimi Raikkonen, really. Now we're back in the lead. Still only half a second between us. And he'll probably get the run on us again. And oh my god, Vettel's now 4.2 seconds back. I think we're losing more time by being in front of Raikkonen than we are behind. Presumably because he has the more powerful power unit and I can just hang in his coattails with the DRS. Whereas I very much don't have the best power unit. I have the worst. I have the worst one. Like, <laughs> I had the worst one since Honda and then I accidentally make the Honda better. <laughs> so GG. Although the gaps fluctuate again. Well, Vettel's pitted. Vettel's pitted for a second time. So he's onto softs for the rest of the race. Raikkonen's got the lead back. Excuse me. Thanks for that. Just turn in on me while I'm there, why don't you? Okay, so what I was about to say is I'm fairly certain that Vettel has uh, pitted slightly earlier and gone onto soft tyres. So Ferrari have obviously split the strategy, because I'm fairly certain Raikkonen's probably going to go on the same strategy as us, just put on another set of super softs. Maybe to the end? I hope so. Don't really want to be pitting again, I don't think. Oh, God! Also, god damn, these tyres are starting to fade away. I think all those laps being stuck in Raikkonen's dirty air and all the laps of sending and dive bombing. I'm trying my best, Jeff. Also, Raikkonen is pitting now. Raikkonen's pitting now. Right, okay. No pressure. This has to be the best in-lap of our career. Well, Raikkonen's gone on to softs as well. Interesting. So, um, Bottas is pitting as well. He's on softs. I swear Jeff said we were going to go on super softs. Jeff. Also, there's a really slow car. That's a Merc. I swear that was a Merc. Was that a Merc? Jeff hasn't said anything about a slow car. But that looks especially like a Mercedes. Oh, Lord. Won't you blow up a Mercedes Benz? Okay, Soft we're tire. pitting now. On the car behind. Okay, so once again, Jeff's completely forgotten to mention that we're actually pitting. Shout out to Jeff there. Right, we're in now. I have a horrible feeling those extra laps spent out might cost us. Go, go, go. But we're back out and away. I think one, probably both of the Ferraris are going to beat us out. But that was our last stop. We're going on to the super soft, so we'll be on grippier tyres than the Ferraris. It's time. It's go time. Let's do this. Both the Ferraris are in front of us. They're on soft tyres. We're on super softs. Let's mother trucking do this. DRS on Vettel, we were fastest in sector three. This is the sector we're gonna be weak in, but the Ferraris are not good in T1. We've got DRS. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh, I've just pooed myself. And we're about to send it on Vettel. We're about to send it on Sebastian Vettel. Come on, come on. Yes, yes. Oh, what happened on that straight? I nearly drove straight up the back of a beetling Lewis Hamilton who's doing a Max Verstappen from France and just deciding, even though he's got an ailing car, he's just not going to pit because YOLO. 
And now our teammates DNF. No! Teammate! Who I only met the other day when I just joined the team, but never mind, I still like him on the pier. No! We've got a yellow flag. Is that for our uh, fallen teammate? I think that was for our fallen comrade. I'm saluting to him out the car. Bye, right, mate. I'll go get him. We'll do this. Okay, clear. And I've just set the fastest lap of the race. A 1 minute 8.2. Oh, no. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on? What? <laughs> Editing Adam, put a replay in. Riken and just slow to a stop. Behind the crawling Merc. It is Hamilton. Hamilton is just trolling real amounts. Riken and just slam the brakes on. We've just yeeted around the outside of both of them. And we're not just in the lead now. We're comfortably in the lead. We've got like the distance of this straight between us and Vettel in second. No, it's Raikkonen back into second now. So Raikkonen is, is still second. Vettel's third. Bottas is fourth with them. Oh my God. And I'm out in front of all of them, set to potentially win on my debut with Renault. My first Grand Prix win. Oh no. There's that slow car again. I mean, seriously. That's Hamilton. What is Hamilton doing? Why is he not pitting? The gap behind us is this is just ridiculous. Do you know what he's done? He's gone rogue. This is like Abu Dhabi all over again, 2016. <laughs> the team is like, okay, Lewis, you need to retire the car. Box, box, box. It, the engine's dead. It's doing about 20 miles an hour. And he's there, just like, well, you know, I think you should just uh, let me race. I'm a, a real racer. If you go for a gap that no longer exists, uh, even with a car that does no longer works, you are no longer a racing driver. Yeah, yeah, but Lewis, Lewis, seriously, mate, you're running on the hybrid system. You're doing about 20 miles an hour. The car is not working anymore. Please retire the car. I think you should shut up and let me race. Having said all of that, though, I have just noticed that Raikkonen's taken a second out of our lead, and there's Hamilton again. <laughs> just trundling around. <laughs> Please, just... Do me a favor, Lewis. Do you want to hold them up? Oh, no, the Ferrari's got straight past him this time. Damn you, Lewis. Oh, my God. Okay, AJ, concentrate. Concentrate now. Raikkonen's there. The gap's 1.3 seconds again. He is angry. Angry reacts only for Kimi Raikkonen, who may have had this race in the bag, and then Lewis Hamilton screwed him over <laughs> and cost him the lead of the race as we flew past on the outside. Now he's angry and he wants his lead back. Oh my god, there's another slow car. There's another slow car. That's Charles Leclerc. Oh my god. Wouldn't it be poetic? Oh no, he hasn't. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, wouldn't it be poetic if Charles Leclerc, the man replacing Raikkonen next year, those two are swapping seats. Wouldn't it be poetic okay, if it was Leclerc that held up Raikkonen? Fortunately, he realised who was behind him and got the F out of the way. <laughs> oh Christ, now Raikkonen's just 0.7 back. Okay. AJ, focus. Seriously, focus now. Editing Adam, I will leave the decision on Epic Music up to you, but I don't think there's been a more warranted time to use it throughout the entire series than right now. Right, he's gonna have DRS this lap. He's gonna have DRS. Is he gonna try and send it? We're gonna have to try and defend. Let's try and defend. Oh, he's gonna try and go on the outside up here. Oh my God. Go on. Yes. Oh, squeezed him out. Yeah, that was a little bit cheeky, but you know what? That was perfectly legal. Oh my God, what's this? Oh no, that's Hamilton again, and he- Oh God! Oh God! Oh the poo! Holy cow! More poo! Riker's trying to go on the outside into T1! Holy- we just cut the corner! Oh my God, what is going on? Hamilton is just trolling the field real amounts! He's nearly made us shit ourselves for the second time in the race! Riker is about to come past! Can we send it- send it to T3? Come on! Come on! Oh God! No, oh, we're banging wheels. Yes, and we got DRS. Come on, come on. Yes, we're gonna stay in front. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no, this is so tense. I cannot take this. Oh my, and that's Hamilton again. Still, he beetles around. Oh, I nearly missed my breaking point because I was distracted. Oh my god, Raikkonen. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's held up Van Dorn, I think. Oh my God, the saga of Lewis Hamilton in this race. He's thrown just an, an epic strop. Oh my God, he's so fast. We're in overtake ERS. I don't think we'll be able to stop him this time. We're just gonna have to counter send a T3, come on. 
yes! Oh! Oh god! Banging wheels, he turned into us! Oh, he's still banging wheels! Holy cow! Right, he's back in the lead, but are we gonna dive him down at T4? Yes, we are! Dive off to the grid! Banging wheels again! Yes! 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 Oh my god, we've got the lead back somehow. He tried to shut the door, but we already put our foot in it. This race has been so exciting, I've completely forgotten to have any of my biscuits. Right, everything up to max. Everything up to max. We've got to try and defend. We've got to defend up this straight. We've got to defend up the hill two more times. Oh, he's gone to the inside this time. Shit! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no. Damn it. Well, we've, got, we've got DRS this time. Okay, come on. We've lost the lead. Stay calm. Stay calm, though. Do we send it again? Oh, we've sent it again at T3! Oh my god, we've just dive on the shit out of him. It worked, though! We're back in the lead! I don't think that was a particularly legit pass, but... <gasps> oh no! Oh god! Oh no, 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 no! Oh, Riken has held up! Riken has held up again! What? Oh my god, what is going on here? This is getting ridiculous now! And there's a yellow flag up here. We're on the final lap of the... <gasps> oh my god! Jesus Christ! Charles Leclerc was sideways on the exit of T1. A blind corner and I didn't see him. What more does this race want to throw at us? Vettel's right there. He's chasing us. We've just got half a lap to go. Half a lap to go in the most batshit insane race that I can remember in recent history. And you can tell it's batshit insane because a Renault is about to win it. Hopefully. Two corners to go. There's the first one. There's the second. I don't believe what's about to happen. But guys, we're about to win our first Grand Prix in Formula One. Yeah! Woo! Oh, I don't believe what's just happened. Look, literally, I don't. That was unbelievable. We've won on debut for Renault. We've, we've done that. <laughs> it's me! I'm like, yeah! What? Oh my god! So Vettel was second in the end, I think. Thotas was third. Raikkonen, I don't think, was even on the podium. Hamilton finished the race, even though he was doing about 20 miles an hour for all of it. And basically gave me the win by slowing down Raikkonen twice in the middle sector. And there's me, like, yeah! Yeah, look at me! Look at this! Yeah, look at this, I'm so happy, look at that! Look at the, oh, this is the trophy, look at this! Look at the trophy, got a silver thing! That's the important part, I got champagne! What are we doing? Let's spray it on Bottas, drink it! Down it, come on, down it, down it! That's actually what I'll be doing, I'm just necking the champagne on the boat. I'm gonna pass out now! Oh my god! So I've actually gone back and watched the replay and I found out what happened to Lewis Hamilton. So you can see here, he's coming in for his second pit stop of the race, out of two. So you can see there, he was at full speed coming into the pits. So that's absolutely fine. He has his pit stop. All going well, he's on soft tyres. He's still in contention for the win, probably. He's up there at the front. He's come out just behind Sebastian Vettel. He pitted at around the same time. And I think he pitted around the same time as maybe Danny Ricciardo? Or maybe uh, Max Verstappen, I can't tell. But, um... Yeah, Lewis, you're supposed to disengage the pit limiter now. You can accelerate. You pass the pit exit line. You're going to, um, you're going to disengage the pit limiter now. You're going to disengage the pit limiter now. Look, there's, there's cars literally almost crashing into you behind. Look at this. He almost causes a big one. <laughs> but look at this. His pit limiter stuck on. His pit limiter was stuck on. And look at all the air. All the other drivers just like, the fuck is this guy doing? People losing bits of wing all over the place. Let me see if we can see what the pit limiter speed is. I think the pit limiter speed is 45 miles an hour. So for some reason, his pit limiter never turned off. And that was it for the rest of the race. That was it. <laughs> he just trundled around at 45 miles an hour for the rest of the Grand Prix. God damn, I, I keep saying it, I don't know what to say. I do not know what to say. It almost feels a bit cheap that Hamilton slowed down Raikkonen twice in that race. I have no idea what the fuck he was playing at. 
But we were battling with Raikkonen for most of that race. And we could have won anyway. And as it stands, we have won. We've won a Grand Prix in F1. This is fucking ridiculous, guys. <laughs> a good day. A good day, you say? <laughs> Am I missing my old team? I mean, Claire. Claire, I've gone from battling to be in the bottom half of the top ten to winning on debut. Things are far better here. I don't care if my rep at Toro Rosso has decreased because there's a fat chance of me ever going back there in a month of Sundays. Right, I'll tell you what. I couldn't have done it without my team behind me. I couldn't have done it without me, team, and me. Thank you, Claire. I know you're still salty with me for giving you the cold shoulder after qualifying, but... Pfft, sorry, I'm all covered in, like, champagne at the moment, and all I'm all sort of sweaty, and I'm a bit sort of bemused as to what's just happened, but sort of happy bemused. I'm like a sort of puppy that's been let loose in a sort of pen full of squeak toys. He doesn't quite know what to do. He doesn't quite know what's going on. He doesn't quite know why he's here, but he, he's happy. <laughs> and also, can we get an F? Can we get multiple Fs for Carlos Sainz, who may well have lost the rivalry before it's even begun? He finished last. I finished first in a first race together for Renault. Oh, but I feel sorry for him, though. I genuinely do. We've won our first race with Renault. I can... Of course, I don't regret a single thing about switching teams eight races into the season when we literally won our first race with the new team. Sorry, Carlos. I'm not trying to brag over here. Sorry about that. I'm not humble bragging. Sorry. Oh, boy. I'm going to have a shower. I'm going to drink all the beers. I'm just going to get so wasted tonight. <laughs> and then to be brutally hungover on the run, on the flight back home to Blighty, to so get ready for our home Grand Prix, both for us and for the team, although it's Renault's French, but the team are based in the UK. And while I'm slamming shots of tequila, parting in the paddock with my first Grand Prix win, let me know down in the comment section below um, what your favourite first ever wins were for your driver, whatever driver, or first ever wins in sport. I mean, the Cleveland Browns, I know, finally won a, a game of American football for the first time in about three centuries, however long it was. They won. They, they, they did win, and apparently everyone was happy about that because they haven't won in ages, so th that could be it for you. Whatever kind of first-time wins you want to put down in the comment section below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. Subscribe to be notified when new videos go up. We upload three times a week. Right now on Wednesdays, we uh, Nay has a Shenmue series on Mondays. And on Fridays, we have various Let's Play, Bad Games, Beat Down, Challenge Belt videos, all that good stuff. We're also, hopefully, going to be streaming every single week, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. I'll be doing Hot Race Car Nights on Tuesdays. Nay should be starting up his streaming on Thursdays very soon. We'll see you guys next time in the Armour Arcade.